Hi friends, I'm Jess. Welcome to the Hex Library where I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple of times a week. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell down below. And today we're going to be going over my wrap up for the month of July. Future me, roll the intro. Lately, we have been starting our wrap-ups with some stats, so I'm going to slide over here and we're going to give you some stats. I feel like I feel short today for some reason. I'm going to lower the camera. Let's try that. That feels better. Uh, in the month of July, I read 11 books for a total of 3,164 pages. My average rating for the month was 3.95, which isn't terrible, but I did read some... Mm, <coughs> Kerp lunkers this month. I also didn't put my DNFs in there and maybe I should. Maybe I should put the DNFs in as zero. I have this is the first month I've had a DNF since I've done an average rating so you let me know. Do you think I should put a DNF in and give it a zero and add it into the average or not count it at all? Let me know. As for length of the books I read One Weapon which is a book over 500 pages, uh, six novels, two novellas, one graphic novel, and one short story. For genres I read three paranormal, one contemporary, three horror, two mystery, one fantasy, and one that I'm considering general fiction. Age category wise we had three mid-grade, one YA, and seven adult. I hit the adult jackpot this month and I had a great time. So let's go over the books. We will start with our lowest rated book and work our way up to the highest. We're actually gonna start with a reread and then our lowest rated and then the highest but that's outside the point. First we have Heartstopper by Alice Oseman, which I guess I could show you if I could find it on my desk here. Heartstopper, Alice Oseman. This was a reread for me. We read it as part of the AuthorTube Chat book club this month. I loved this just as much as I did the first time. I read the first four volumes in the same day when I read them last year. They were absolutely fantastic. Um, I've only read the first one so far, but I do plan to read the other three later this month um, for the Amazing Readathon. Uh, we are going to have a weekend where I know short books are going to be helpful, so I'll definitely be reading it that weekend, and then I will watch season two of the show. I'll probably rewatch season one first and then watch season two, but either way, I love this. It's fantastic. It's super cute. It's super adorable. It's about, you know, boys in love. And who's mad about that? The lowest rate of the book of the month was Home Sweet Haunt by PJ Knight. This is book 15 in the Creepover series. I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This is probably the lowest rated of the series for me. It was not good. I guessed from the back of the book um, what the like the scare was going to be. If you don't know, these are a mid-grade novel series that all involve some kind of a creepy sleepover. Some are haunting, some are vampires, some are creepy dolls that take over people's lives. Um, they're usually really short and they're just kind of like a fun spooky read. This one says it's a five creepy on the creepo meter and this was like a one creepy on the creepover meter for me. Typically as I've been reading these it has a, like a creepo meter on the back and um, if it's like a five creepy, I usually give it a five star. If it's a three creepy, I give it a three star. This was a five creepy that got a 2.5 out of five stars. I was not a fan. Um, this one follows a girl who lives in an apartment with her parents. There was a fire in the apartment and since then her parents are afraid to let her leave the house. So she's been having to do homeschool. She's not allowed to hang out with her friends and they're just being very weird about it. But they do let her go out on Halloween to go trick-or-treating but only in her building. For me, this one was pretty dumb. But I mean, I guess if you're a mid grader, you might enjoy it. But I did not. And I've enjoyed a lot of the others. So we're going to have Secrets Within book seven of the Sarah Normal series. Again, this is a short mid grade creepy series where our main character Sarah can see ghosts. She moves from the West Coast to the East Coast to live with a crazy little old lady um, who is a psychic. Uh, her and her dad move in with her to help her take help her take care of the house and her powers continue to grow throughout the series. I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This was probably my least favorite of this series as well. I just have so many questions and also so many concerns about this series. Lady Azura is the um, lady who lives in the house that they live in her house and she has similar powers to Sarah's 
And whenever Sarah, who is 12, by the way, when she has a problem, when she like, when her powers start to change and she sees something that, you know, is, she's literally terrified of it. I mean, she's seeing hauntings, ghosts, people are coming after her. Like, she's terrified. And Lady Azura is like, well, just give it another week or two and see if you can figure it out on your own before I interfere. And I'm like, bitch, she's 12. She needs help. Like, <laughs> help this poor girl. And that really is like my biggest complaint with this book. There was a lot of things happening to Sarah that were terrifying for anybody at any age, let alone a 12 year old girl. And Lady Azura was just like, you'll figure it out. You'll be fine. Listen here, you little old bitty. You best help that girl out or I'm going to come for you. Next, we have one that I don't have a physical copy of and that is Dead of Winter by Darcy Coates. I gave that a 3.75 out of 5 stars. This one follows our main character who she and her boyfriend are going on a trip to this like hotel in the woods, this lodge in the woods, um, that they're getting like a special investigational tour of with along with a group of like 10 other people. And she thinks that her boyfriend's going to propose to her while they're there. Um, they run into like the bus that's traveling them there runs into a tree across the road and so they're trying to clear the tree and he's like let's go look for a cool vantage point and she's like oh my god he's going to propose and so they start walking up and they get lost and she gets separated from him the other group of like 10 people find her they weren't able to get the bus clear they found a cabin in the woods and then people start dying so this is probably my least favorite Darcy Coates again my least favorite creepover my least favorite Sarah Normal my least favorite Darcy Coates it was a time in July um, I knew who the killer was very early on. I knew also very early on there's a conversation that happens that I'm like, oh, that's why the killer's doing the killing. I didn't really figure out how everything else was kind of incorporated into it, but I knew who the killer was very early on and knew why they were doing it very early on. So <laughs> that just kind of ruined some of the magic for me that is Darcy Coates. And so it was just, it was just, not the best. I mean, it wasn't awful. It was a 3.75, which is still a four star book. It's still fantastic, but um, just not my favorite. Also at a 3.75 out of 5 stars, we have The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. This is the book club pick for my local bookstores book club. If you knew how many times I've recorded myself saying that in the last five seconds, because it's a tongue twister. English language. Use the English, use the English, English language. Use the English, use the English. We're reading translated works this year. This is translated, I believe, from Japanese. And it was a time. Our main character lives on an island that is unnamed. She is also unnamed. And on this island, things disappear. Things like hats, ribbons, but it's not like a hat or a ribbon. It's like all of them. They all disappear and then people forget that they ever existed. Or if they remember that they existed, they don't remember what they were. Like they'll remember the name of the thing, but not what it was or why it existed. And then more important things start disappearing, like birds and fruit and other things that are super important to the people. This is not a book that you're going to get an answer to. It's not a book that you're going to find out why the things are disappearing or why people believe that the things are disappearing even though when a lot of times they're the ones that are throwing the things out. There are people who don't forget what the things are and there are people who do forget what the things are and the memory police are the people who round up the people who aren't forgetting and they take them to some undisclosed location and no we don't ever find out what that undisclosed location is. This really is more about an introspective look at societies and how people are able to function with governments and you know how you believe what the government tells you. Um, it's very nuanced. It was a really good discussion for book club. We then have Off the Wall by BJ Knight book number 14 in the Creepover series and I gave this a four out of five stars. This one is a group of kids that are going to spend the night in the museum and there's a haunting of a mummy and they have to wonder if one of their group is the mummy itself. And the kids are just kind of roaming the halls and having a good time. And it was interesting. There's some weird bits, but it was an interesting read and I did enjoy it. And I liked the plot twist at the end. Also at four out of five stars, Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister. This book follows a woman, I believe her name is Jen. And she has a son who is 18 and she is waiting up for him one night. It's pretty late. It's like 1 or 2 a.m. And she's looking out the window and she sees him murder a stranger on the street outside of their home and she's like this is not my kid I don't know who this is I don't know what's happening in the midst of her trying to figure that out the 
police come take her kid away and they are not allowed to see him because he's 18 and so she's sent home and she is eventually at some point able to go to sleep when she wakes up the next day rather than it being the next day it's actually the day prior and the book follows her going back further and further in time and learning all these important things about how her kid ended up being in a position to kill someone that he didn't know or that she didn't know and it's a very interesting look at relationships and how things are not always what they seem. This has a lot of twists in it. It was a very good book. This was um, the book club pick for Beautifully Bookish Bethany's Patreon book club and we had a great discussion about this um, and about how there were a lot of plot twists. It didn't necessarily go where any of us really thought that it was going to go or if it did go where we were thinking there were other things added on to it in layers and the epilogue changes everything and I have so many questions like all of the questions and none of the answers but I liked our main character I liked her family I liked a lot of like the aspects of what she learns as she goes back in time how do you reconcile with you know in present day her father is dead but as she goes back further in time her father's alive and does she help him so that he lives longer like what is she supposed to do do the things that she affects in the past affect the future it's a hot mess but I loved it at a 4.25 out of 5 stars, we have The Haunting of Gillespie House by Darcy Coates. I read three Darcy Coates this month. It's a woman who is house sitting for a couple. Uh, they have this house and she's very confused by the fact that they have in these upper floors, like all of the furniture from the house is all like upstairs, all of the antique, beautiful furniture. And like the stuff downstairs is just like modern day stuff. This book is basically a cautionary tale of how when you house sit for someone, you shouldn't be a snoop because I feel like none of these things would have happened to her if she had just kept her nose out of other people's business, but it was still a fun time. This book deals with cults and how people are able to fall under the umbrella of a cult leader and why they believe the things that they believe. Uh, that was a really fun look at, you know I love cult stories if you've been here before, so um, plus I love Darcy Coates, so it was just a really good time. I Our main character was not my favorite main character of Darcy Coates, um, but I did like her and I liked the story. It wasn't my favorite story again, but it was a good one. I do think this story was plenty creepy. There were a lot of creepy scenes, especially the one in the basement. <sighs> there was some really gross, creepy, <laughs> disgusting scenes. They were a fun time. The ending, I'm not really sure how we got to where we got to at the end, but I did like it. I liked the story. I liked where things ended up. Um, it was it was interesting and then like the conclusion there was like kind of like a happily ever after but not really it was, it was a fun time I really want to know how many times do I say it was a fun time next we have The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson I also gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars this is the second book in the Mistborn trilogy um, I read this the entire month. It was the last book I finished of the month and the first book that I started of the month because I kept doing readathons that this book didn't work for and so I would put it down for a week, do the readathon, and then pick it back up and then put it down for a week and do a readathon and then pick it back up. Also, she a chunker. It was like 700 and some odd pages. Um, I had a great time though. Um, I'm loving this series. This was not my favorite. I didn't like this as much as the first book. Um, but you know, middle book slump is a thing. Even Sanderson can fall to middle book slump apparently. But I had a fantastic time reading this. I loved seeing Ben and Elle and just like their whole world and how things had changed since the ending of the first book and how like all of our criminals were doing or all of the gang were doing and how the political structure had changed and what had changed, what hadn't changed, things that were the same, um, and like this world and it's growing and all of the magics and everything. This series is so good. Like everybody says it's good and you're like it can't be that good and then you read it and you're like fuck it is that good. I don't know how, okay? I don't. I don't know how. I don't know how he does the things that he does. I don't like it. I'm jealous. But I'm glad that he does it because that means I get to read it. Speaking of books that were a wild time, I'm the only one left by Riley Sager. Uh, she was a trip my friends. This book is a our main character Kit who is like a home health aide. She goes to stay at the home of this little old lady who is paralyzed from multiple strokes and she pretty much only has the use of one arm. I don't remember which but when she was in her late teens she was accused of killing her mother, father, and sister as she was the only one left of the family and the only one there that night and she was never they never were able to actually find her guilty but everyone believes that she did it and so this girl is you know really struggling with do I have to be afraid of this woman is she actually able to do anything to hurt me um 
you know, she's not able to actually get out of the bed. So do I have to be afraid of her? But also talking to like the other people who live in the house and work in the house. And then there was like a suicide possibly before she got there, but was it or was it a murder? And then you're just figuring out all the things. And in true Riley Sager fashion, there's a bajillion twists at the end. And it was so good. This is definitely one of those books where you get to the end, you're reading the epilogue and you're like, I love where this is going. And then the epilogue changes everything again. The book changed everything on its own, but then the epilogue changed it again. Like it goes in so many places and I had a fantastic time. This is one of my favorite of Sager's. As I always say with Sager's books, um, some people like them, some people don't. I personally liked The Last Time I Lied, Home Before Dark, and The House Across the Lake. I did not like lock every door. Final Girls was okay and I haven't read Survive the Night because everybody talks about how bad it is. I will pick it up eventually though. Um, so if that helps you decide if you think this is a savior for you or not. I haven't heard anybody explicitly say that they've hated this one so this may be the Sager book for everybody. I don't know. You let me know. Have you read it? Did you like it? And then the final book that we're going to talk about this month, which was my favorite and highest rated book of the month, which was a short story, and that is Crawl Space by Darcy Coates. It's actually a short story that was the inspiration for Gillespie House. And she was, she had an idea for a short story. She started writing it into a full length novel and that became The Haunting of Gillespie House. And it was so much different from her original vision that she was like, I'm gonna go ahead and write this short story too. And the short story was creepy. The thing that I love about short stories, especially haunting, creepy, spooky short stories is that you don't really get the epilogues. So you don't really get like the happily ever after. So the last scene that you get is usually very creepy and I love that. Um, if you get any of the newer copies of uh, The Haunting of Gillespie House or you read the audiobook which I believe is an audible original um, they have the short story crawl space at the end of that and that's how I listen to it um, but it was so good. We should also talk about these. Uh, I unhauled some books this month. I decided to unhaul King of Battle and Blood and American Gods and I DNF'd Tithe which is the first book in the modern fairy tales trilogy by Holly Black and therefore will be unhauling Ironside and Valiant. Um, all of my explanations for why I DNF'd those will be in the TBR takedown which will be the next video that's up so make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss that. That is all I have for today if you made it this far in the video leave me a ghosty emoji in the comments down below. Also be on the lookout for an announcement for the Summer Scare Readathon. I know it's going to be in September, which is not ideal because, I mean, September technically is still summer until the 21st, okay, but it is already encroaching upon spooky time. We typically like to do it a little earlier. It was originally planned for the first week of October, but then Brie messaged me and was like, hey, do you want to help host the Amazing Readathon? And I was like, uh, yes. And I can't help host a readathon and host a readathon at the same time. It will be in September what exact dates and prompts and all of those things will be coming to you very very soon. But until then I will see you guys next time. Bye!